Not too long ago, I did a video on my new HK45 Tactical. It's an excellent pistol, but I did have one complaint which earned it the near perfect pistol rating. And that was that the rear sights did not have any night sights, while the front sight was equipped with a tritium night sight. Well, what I've done is I've been doing some reading, some research, some studying, if you want to call it that, um, and I took on a project that we're going to talk about today in this video on painting on your own night sights. And this video is a little bit different than some of my other videos. It's rather lengthy, but it's lengthy because I wanted to give a lot of details for anyone who might be interested in doing kind of the same thing. In fact, if you look at the description, I've added some links. Number one, for a PDF document that I wrote up, which gives the general step-by-steps, including a list of materials that you'll need to do this. And in that PDF, there's also the time stamps to jump from one part of this video to another. Well, those time stamps are also directly added to the description. So if you're going to undertake something like this, you might want to watch the video entirely. It's about 30 minutes in length. Um, and then go back and um, watch the steps step by step as you do the same thing if you choose to do this. Now, um, is it absolutely perfect? I guess not. Uh, perhaps if I did it again, I would not have made these night sight dots as large uh, as I did here. However, I have been using this um, pistol now with the night sights, and I'll tell you, number one, this glow-on luminescent paint will stay glowing all night long. Uh, I have tested this over and over and over again. I take a look at it at night, and then in the morning it is still glowing, so that's good. It is not as bright as the tritium front sight, though. Um, and that is why I made these dots a little bit larger, so that they do give off enough glow, so that I can pick them up uh, in night or in a dark uh, situation. Um, they certainly don't obstruct anything. If anything, they make things just that little bit better. So since this is kind of a long video to start with, let's go ahead and get right into it and roll the video. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be painting night sights, uh, little dots on the rear sight. Now, there are some other companies that do make replacement sights for the HK45T. A couple of problems that I found with those. One is a lot of them are not the elevated or suppressor height rear sights, which then is going to cause problems with the suppressor height front sight. Secondly, others that I found are plastic in construction, and they don't give you this nice sharp edge or abrupt edge that a person can use in an emergency situation to rack the slide uh, if you only have one hand available. Still other sites that I found were made of plastic, and that is another uh, problem that I'm concerned with. Lastly, you have to understand that replacing these rear sights is not really a simple process. Uh, probably something best left to uh, a gunsmith or an HK armorer. This has to be, as you can see, it's dovetailed in. This has to be punched out and the new sight drifted in uh, and set just right so that it is in, again in alignment with the front sight. So rather than deal with any of that, what I have decided to do is to try to install or configure some nice night sights on this rear sight myself. Now I've done a lot of model making. 
uh, I'm kind of accustomed to some really fine painting. So I think I can uh, pull this off without too much problems. And I kind of thought this process through. So what I'm going to be doing is a, a multiple step or multiple phase project. And one of the first things that I'm going to do is tape off this entire rear sight. But before we actually start working on the project itself, let me go through the materials that are going to be needed to finish this job. First of all, you're going to need some flat black paint. What I've done is I've chosen Tester's Model uh, Master Enamel paint. I got this at, or picked it up at Hobby Lobby. Actually, I purchased a couple different blacks. I avoided gloss black because I don't want to be picking up uh, glare or reflection on this rear sight. In fact, I don't know if you can see it very well, but this is a, it has the, this has some very fine serrations in it, specifically done to reduce or eliminate glare on the rear sight. So I purchased a couple bottles of black paint and I did some testing just on a piece of paper. And one of those uh, black paints did cause a little bit of glare. It was called gunmetal black and so I'm not going to use it. I am indeed using flat black. You'll also need some white paint. Again, this is Tester's enamel. Um, and what we're going to do is after we have this face of this rear sight painted uh, an even coat of black, we're going to get around to uh, adding a white base paint to the dots uh, that I'll be uh, installing or painting on. And then to make them into night sights, and actually if you don't want to make them into night sights, a person could stop uh, with just the uh, three dot system. That would work out just fine as well. But I purchased this. This is Glow On, tiny little bottle of luminescent paint. I got this paint through Amazon.com. I also did some testing on this and I think that it's going to work pretty well. I don't think it's going to be as luminescent as that tritium night sight that's in the front, but nonetheless it is going to uh, offer some uh, glow to it uh, for these rear sights. Maybe better than what I'm anticipating. You're also going to need an alcohol swab. I want to make sure that this rear sight face is free of any oils or greases to make sure that the paint adheres very well. I bought a brand new paint brush also from Hobby Lobby. Very nice little brush. Should do an excellent job for uh, this job. And you're going to need a paper punch. Now I thought about using a leather punch. In fact I tried using a leather punch, practiced a little bit uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to be punching a fine hole or a small, that's a one eighth inch paper punch. We're going to be punching that small hole through this painter's tape. And I tested the leather punch and it does not do a nice job on something as thin as tape. So I went with a paper punch did some testing already on it and gee it cuts just a beautiful fine little hole through it well worth the three bucks that I paid for this at Hobby Lobby also. You're going to need to keep that brush clean so some mineral spirits that I already had on hand are going to be handy to clean up this enamel paint. Uh, Testers is an oil based enamel so mineral spirits followed by some uh, dish detergent and hot water will keep this um, brush in really nice condition, probably in very good condition, even well beyond this project here. And I encourage you to do a test on paper, uh, even you know testing out the brush and all those sorts of techniques on paper before you start doing the actual work on the site itself. And lastly, you're going to need the rear sight. So what I've done is I have removed the slide from the uh, HK45 and I'm placing it here. This is nice and sturdy. Nothing is moving at all and you'll notice 
that this slide is not absolutely flat on the bottom. So that's the reason why I'm using something like this. I can hook this over the edge and now it is absolutely flat, firm, and solid. Okay, step one. Using this alcohol prep pad, I'm going to thoroughly clean the rear sight. And I'm going to clean the top edge as well. That way my tape will stick very well. There we go. Now we're going to let that dry and continue on. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Okay, let's go ahead and apply the first coat of black paint to the back here. I've shaken this bottle vigorously, and we don't want a terribly thick coat. I chose testers because it's thin enough, a thin enough paint. I don't want to build up a whole lot of uh, thick paint on this. Now the reason why I'm applying a black paint here is so it is uniform. The whole rear sight, in other words, has a very uniform appearance to it after the job is over with. Otherwise, what's certainly going to happen is you'll be able to see where some of the black paint was applied maybe nearby the sight dots and it just will not look very good. Certainly won't look very professional. We can also use this coat to seal the edge of the paint and that's another one of its jobs actually right now to seal the edge of the tape onto the site. Now don't be in a big hurry with all this. Don't try to get this done in one day. It's not going to be done in one day. This is going to take you some time. Take your time with it. Allow the coats to dry in between and then apply the second coat, the third coat, etc, etc. One coat of this black is going to suffice, I'm almost certain of it, and then we'll start working with some white paint. Now the next step is what I would say is the most important, most critical step. And what that is, is we need to actually locate or correctly place these dots, one on either side of the notch, so that it is in correct relation to the front side. So we just don't want to kind of willy-nilly put a dot here and a dot there, because if we're, when we're using this gun, uh, it needs to work with, for us uh, correctly. So what I've decided to do is to begin by putting just a tiny little dot about here and a tiny little dot about there. It's going to be centered in this section of the notch. It is a, or of the rear sight. It is a flat area uh, bordered by these angular areas. And then it needs to go down appropriately so that it is in that relationship with the front sight. To do that, I'm going to employ some nice goggles so I can really see what the heck is going on here. And bear in mind, you want to make sure that this, what you're marking is the center of these dots. 
just a tiny little bit of paint is all that's necessary. On the tip, I'm using a pointed toothpick. And we certainly want these to be even relative to one another as well. Okay, let's see how we did. Now these white dots are really not going to stay in place. It's just uh, put here as a temporary placeholder so I can then put the tape over it. The way this is going to work, if you take a look at this, I've already kind of pre-punched this, just testing this punch, but what I'm doing is I'm using this tool here, and it works really slick, and punch it. Now it's going to want to stick a little bit, because it's tape. We can remove it. We see that it makes a very nice clean cut hole. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to use my X-Acto knife and I'm going to cut out small rectangles on either side of these pre-punched holes and I'm going to have a long tail extending to the left for this dot and a long tail extending to the right for this dot so I can place it and sort of wrap it in here and make sure that I secure it. Those white dots are effectively going to be placed in the center of these holes. Let's see if we can get these placed correctly. That is looking really good there. That looks very nice. Now you might notice that this dot looks very large. You might also notice that the front sight has a circle, uh, a white circle that is larger than the luminescent part. And so I'm trying to emulate that as well as I can. Now on this side, on the right side, I do want to center that dot. Yeah, that's looking nice. Okay, the next step, and I can do this all in one session, is I'm going to paint black over this entire thing. Same exact black that we used. Now here's the little trick, and you can actually do this when you're painting your house. Lay down this tape, okay, and then whatever color is behind it, that you might be worried that the new top coat or different color might bleed underneath this tape. What you want to do is take that color, the color underneath, and now paint it over the top of this whole thing. That way if any color bleeds through, it's going to be the color underneath the tape. In other words, that first layer. Then when you apply the actual color you're interested in, in this case the bright white, it's not going to be able to bleed through because that black has effectively sealed your tape. It's a nice little trick, works out just perfect whether you're painting in the house or you're going to do the paint here. Then after that white paint goes on, that's when we're going to start doing a build-up coat of that luminescent paint. Here we go. Yeah, that's looking nice. we go. Now, once again, time to let all this dry. Okay, I've applied three coats of that flat black to these dots that I had cut out previously. As you can see, I've also added a little bit uh, extra green tape in preparation for today's little job or the next step, which is now to apply the white paint. And now it's going to start looking kind of like we expect it. So once again, vigorously shaking this paint. I'm anticipating we're going to need to put on a few coats of white. And the important thing here, of course, 
is not to put on one thick, thick coat, but we will just take care of this with a couple of coats. Okay, now this is starting to take shape and it's looking more like what you'd expect it to look. And right now we're going to start putting on coats of this luminescent glow-on paint. By the way, I put on two coats uh, of the white paint. So we'll go ahead and start putting on the first coat of the luminescent paint. They are recommending allowing 30 minutes between coats, which isn't bad. Obviously it dries fairly quickly and you can allow it to dry more than that. And that certainly wouldn't be bad. They're also recommending allowing this to dry at least 24 hours after your final coat before you're going to see full brightness achieved by the luminescent paint and also to wait at least 24 hours before putting a top coat on this um, like I'm planning to do maybe some nail polish or uh, something uh, like that. That's simple right now we're going to leave it alone and let it sit at least 30 minutes before we apply a uh, second coat. Now comes the moment we've all been waiting for I have two coats of the glow-on paint uh, that have been applied and dried. We're at about 24 hours since the last coat was put on. And so now I just need to remove some paint, uh, tape. I'm going to try to try to remove it in pretty much the same order that I applied it. And I'm really hoping that this turned out nicely. Just going to score it a little bit. Now I'll clean that up along those edges. These X-Acto knives are really amazing how sharp and how precisely a person can cut these little guys. Now the last step is where we're going to apply either some uh, clear fingernail polish or some other um, clear overcoat finish. I'm still experimenting with that and I'll go ahead and put it on later on. Uh, that's going to be pretty important though I think because as we're cleaning this and the solvents might get on there, probably will. Um, I want to make sure I don't have all this paint removed um, during cleaning and so on. Now the last step in my Night Sights project is to put an overcoat over the top of that rear sight. And I'm sure I'm glad that I practiced with various overcoats before I just used one of them. I tried out a couple of my wife's um, clear nail polish coating and I didn't really like any of those because it really left an awful lot of glare, gloss, very shiny type of stuff. I also tried some spray enamel crystal clear matte finish but what I noticed is that this stuff more or less dissolved some of my other paint including the luminescent paint making it into an absolute mess. The third thing that I tried is a matte or flat overcoat made by testers and it worked out really really well. So I then used that on the actual site itself and I'm pretty happy on how the whole thing turned out. In hindsight, you know, maybe those rear sights are a little bit too large, could have made them a little bit smaller uh, because that luminescent paint actually is pretty bright. And the reason why I chose a little bit 
or went with a little bit larger dot is because I was concerned it wouldn't be quite as bright as necessary. Uh, but of course what I could do, I guess, is I could make that dot now a little bit smaller by blacking out some parts of it. I don't think I'm going to do that though. Uh, we'll see as I use it uh, how well I like it or not and if it causes me any problems because of the difference in size. Overall I haven't really done much shooting with it with the new sights on it so I can't really attest to this is the greatest thing in the world or I really regret doing it anything like that. I like it because it is still an improvement over the rear sights that came from the factory. Hey thanks for joining in and watching.